G'day folks. Well, I'm just tidying up out here and thought I'd uh, strip down the tyre that I popped with the uh, water pump. Um, I figured it's video worthy since, uh, well, I found that the rim itself is partially distorted. These outer lips have been peeled up a little bit. Uh, remember, this did fail at 250 psi, so that's a ton of force being pushed against that edge. So they have failed. Um, I ended up cutting the back bead just to get it off. It's sort of a lazy way of doing it, but everything's trash, so no harm done. Uh, that's the bead that I severed, and you can see the construction too. You can see the bead cable is in there. That's what keeps it all together. That is part of the bead assembly that they must lay into the mould, and then you can see they wrap these nylon cords over and around it's just it's a radial configuration hence the name radial tire uh, yeah failure was instantaneous and quite catastrophic it's failed all the way through there and all the way down to here and I had my pressure port screwed in there and that was the point of failure the other thing I was interested in was were there any existing repairs or anything and there weren't so this tyre's never been punctured up until now, and that was where the point of failure was. That one there will probably get the same test, but I will not be putting my air bleed in through the tread. I'm going to make a secondary valve stem in the rim, drill a hole in it, and have a probe tube go up to the, the highest point, so when I stand it on its end, all the air gets pushed out and replaced by water. Uh, again, I don't want any air in there because it's a noise and explosion issue. This wasn't very violent, it just sort of fell over off the crate when it went off. But if you use compressed air, it's pretty much deadly. So yeah, you can see some of the construction of the tyre there. There's, long, there's good articles online on how they're constructed. But that's the tread cap, which is vulcanised on after the fact. The inner lining is the carcass, the radial reinforced uh, substrate. It's amazing how much abuse they can take. I wasn't expecting failure at 250, I was expecting failure at 150. Mind you, this is for a small SUV, it's for a Nissan X-Trail, so being a small SUV tyre, it's probably rated a little bit higher than normal passenger types. The codes on this, that's the size. Um, A-rate temperature various codes and things but nothing that really tells me it doesn't even tell you what how many plies there are normally there's a a molding on there which tells you how many sidewall plies how many tread plies and what material they're made of but it's not on this I'd have to look up the data sheet but either way Toyo Tranpath A14 failure at 250 psi and only in a spot where it had been punctured be interesting to see how well that one goes assuming it hasn't already been repaired once um, I'd say maybe it has maybe it hasn't there's always odds on that one but I'm going to clean the tread with the gurney first and uh, just outline any potential failure points with a white paint pen before we go ahead with the test so that one can go in the scrap tire pile which I have to get rid of soon and this one here eventually when I get the time I'll prep it for the same test uh, I might even break the bead first and screw two metal valves in instead of relying on these. I was also half expecting the um, valve stem to blow out of this rim, but it didn't. It stayed in there the whole time. But it looks like the outer lip has been pushed out a bit compared with that rim there, which is more flat, square. Don't know. Either way, it's scrap steel now. Anywho, I just thought I'd do a little report on that one and thanks for watching and again that one doesn't have construction markings on it just a few basic codes that's the date manufacture code there anywho I'm going to clear this area and get the Nissan Micra in for rear brakes just park it over here and do one side at a time lazy man's way <laughs>